My adolescence was a decade of exploring, like literally just exploring outside. And I never thought of it as exercise or fitness. After all, I hated gym class and lost in every competitive sport, with the exception of gymnastics, which felt more like competing against myself. So yeah, I wasn't an athlete, but looking back, it's obvious that everything I did was incredibly physically active. And it's a crucial part of my identity that I lost after moving out on my own and starting my adult life. I went from hours of daily sunlight and exercise to spending my entire early 20s in a makeshift warehouse trying to run my first business. And in hindsight, I can see that leaving this keystone behind sucked the life out of me. The realization hit me last year. PewDiePie started posting bouldering clips to his story on Instagram. And I was like, I need to try that. I had been indoor rock climbing as a kid, and I still have vivid memories of the satisfaction that came along with scaling the walls and the adrenaline of letting go and belaying back down. But the idea of bouldering was new to me. Instead of being tied up with a partner and gradually making your way to the ceiling, you climb to lower platforms more quickly and without any safety ropes or spotting. So I got a membership last June at a local climb gym, and oh no, it's herp crack. I got addicted so quickly. Finally getting back to physically throwing my body around and just straining my muscles made me feel the way people describe drug-induced highs. In my late teens and early 20s, I was mentally and emotionally kind of just degrading. I went the classic route of therapies and antidepressants, and they did suppress thoughts and feelings to an extent, but they always came back and I didn't even feel like myself. What I actually just needed personally was to physically push myself to my limit. It's like when you're sick with like a sinus infection or a stuffy nose, and it just finally clears, it has that like popping sensation, and all of a sudden you can just like, there's just so much air flowing in and out of your nose and it feels so good. And I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even realize how stuffy my nose was. It sounds kind of dramatic, but this is how I just mentally felt from getting back into physical activity. So while my problems weren't magically gone overnight, it did give me the clarity I needed to responsibly and kind of in a controlled way, think through what was going on and what decisions I needed to make to actually improve my life. This newfound drug did come along with some side effects though. It wasn't just the addiction to bouldering that I experienced. I spent so much time in the gym this first month that I almost made no money. My primary source of income last year was YouTube, followed by Amazon delivery and Uber. During this month, I stopped uploading videos and didn't pick up a single package or passenger. And bouldering was undeniably the fuel that reignited my love of physical activity, but not the end all be all. On days I was too sore or too tired to make it to the gym, I began experimenting with at-home calisthenics routines that were suggested to me while watching bouldering videos. And just like that, the childlike feeling of exploration was back. <laughs> I got back into bicycling, and I got belay certified at the climbing gym. However, the classic exercise, the exercise of all time was still missing, lifting weights. My climb gym had a small weights room in the back, and they actually had training and classes to use it. I was just, for some reason, anxious to sign up to it, but with a final push, I actually pulled the trigger. I honestly wasn't sold yet. I kind of felt like I was wasting my energy that could go towards something actually fun. Not to mention my hamstrings were on fire like never before. But having access to one-on-one -on -one instruction pretty much as often as I wanted was the motivation to continue weightlifting. I shifted my schedule from bouldering five days a week to three days of weightlifting and two days of bouldering. And unsurprisingly, this was not sustainable because I essentially had no rest days and the soreness was completely inhibiting me because my muscles were just like, please, please give us a break. <laughs> I ended up dropping one bouldering day and then dropping both of them. As my form improved with weightlifting and I could start lifting more than just the empty bar, which I did for quite a while, my priorities began to shift. Activities like biking and bouldering are painful and exhausting, but they come with the payoff of reaching the top or seeing new scenery on a trail. So I had this preconceived notion that weightlifting would be all the pain with none of the payoff because it's you just you're in a room like picking up metal. But I was wrong. Each rep I would complete came along with a surprising burst of endorphins that built over the set. And while bouldering generally worked the same muscle groups, I could hit new parts of my body every day that rarely feel sore 
with the help of a barbell and a, a trainer, I guess. He was helpful too. <laughs> Eventually though, I finally accepted I do have to go pay my bills sooner or later. And while this gym was great, it was also $95 a month. So once I felt my form was good enough to go without a human spotter, I funneled my membership money into my own squat rack. And while attending a gym is, it's special and it has a lot of perks, this immediately saved me over an hour of driving each day, which meant I could actually maintain consistency while getting back into some of my regular work. And that brings us to today. I really miss bouldering and I think about it pretty much every day. So yes, 95 a month does suck, but the part I really can't afford is the actual time investment it takes to go. However, there is an end in sight to these other responsibilities and getting back into bouldering is near the top of my priorities list. And I don't even regret that month of neglecting everything that wasn't the gym. It was actually in this new clear state of mind while bouldering that I decided once and for all, I am permanently pivoting my YouTube channel and starting a new series. And while that series is currently on hiatus, it is still the collection of videos that I am more proud of than anything else I've produced when it comes to video. And that's in addition to how these new hobbies of climbing and lifting helped me take back my ingrained passion for physical activity. Thank you. I really miss gymnastics. It's been over a decade and I didn't even do it for that long. And yet for some reason, I still point my toes every time I'm exercising. I stopped, I think due to pressure from teachers to quote, focus on schoolwork, but imagine how physically able I would be right now if I was training gymnastics the past decade. Ultimately, I don't actually regret stopping, and that's not a cope. It's because that important schoolwork would have replaced something. And if it didn't replace gymnastics, it would have replaced the time that I was spending making YouTube videos. I don't think I even had 30 subscribers at the time, but what's wild to me is choosing YouTube over gymnastics at the age of 11 turned out to be the single most important career decision of my entire life.